BTC voluntary burning accidental loss effects over the long term. PU asks, could voluntary burning of Bitcoin inadvertently harm Bitcoin? Users or services might choose to voluntarily burn some of their Bitcoin as a deflationary gift to all other Bitcoin holders. I have even heard people say that when they die, they will not provide keys for all of their Bitcoin to their family. Instead, they will effectively burn some BTC by not providing the keys. This would have the deflationary effect of boosting price, but could it also hurt Bitcoin over the long term? Any serious side effects of burning Bitcoin and speeding up deflation? All right, first of all, whoever said they will not provide the keys their Bitcoin to their family upon their death um, has to win the Montgomery C. Burns Carmudgeon of the Year award. I mean, seriously supporting the Bitcoin community and wanting to give a deflationary gift, sure, but <laughs> burning your Bitcoin rather than giving it to your family, either you have a really, really terrible uh, family, um, but even so, like friends, charities, nothing, really, you're just gonna burn it all. Um, so after that comment, let's actually answer the question. There isn't any serious side effect or risk to um, destroying Bitcoin or losing Bitcoin and creating more Bitcoin deflation for the rest of the holders um, or owners of Bitcoin. You know, one of the things that people might think is, okay, but what if we really start running out of Bitcoin? What if we lose out of the 21 million, 20 million of it? Does that then mean that we don't have enough to do transactions? Well, that's a bit equivalent to the other question I get quite often, which is um, Bitcoin's only divisible to eight decimal places. What if we run out of granularity? What if a Satoshi ends up being too expensive um, to do anything with, and um, we need to have even smaller units? Both of those questions are related. Basically, let's say we lost twenty and a half million Bitcoin, and all that was left was half a million Bitcoin for the entire world. Um, what would we do then? And the answer is really simple. We'd start working on subdivisions of Satoshis. We'd start uh, increasing the amount of decimal points that we uh, use for Bitcoin so that we would subdivide the existing um, pool of Bitcoin to even finer units, smaller than a Satoshi. We'd go sub-Satoshi. Um, in fact, this is already happening. The Lightning Network doesn't operate on Satoshis. It operates on milli-Satoshis. How is that possible, you might say? Well, um, by ensuring that settlement is rounded up, um, Lightning Network can operate on milli Satoshis internally while settling transactions at a Satoshi level uh, on final settlement, and that gives um, the aggregation of milli Satoshis into Satoshis gives the Lightning Network a lot of flexibility. This is not the last time this is going to happen. In fact, we are going to see sub Satoshi units being developed. There are a number of interesting tricks to do that, including some techniques developed by uh, Thaddeus Dreija, uh, Taj Dreija, uh, who is one of the co-authors of the Lightning Network uh, white paper back in, I think it was 2014, and who has made some incredibly insightful and creative contributions to the state of the art in cryptography. And cryptocurrencies, and one of the things he developed as a concept was, I believe, and I hope I'm attributing it correctly, um, is a, a way to do probabilistic subdivision of satoshis. If you're interested, look up Thaddeus Dreija, Taj Dreija, and sub satoshi um, amounts. Very interesting uh, presentation on that. So. Bottom line, we can go to smaller units, and therefore it doesn't matter how much of Bitcoin is lost or burned, it won't have any effect. It is truly a deflationary gift to the rest of the, of the uh, Bitcoin economy. Uh, it doesn't matter. If you lose your Bitcoin, everybody gains a bit of value on theirs. Um, I hope it doesn't happen to you, but if it does, you're not hurting anybody else other than yourself. Uh, and in the case of the Montgomery C. Burns 
uh, winner of Carmangen of the Year, you're also hurting your family because you decided to burn your Bitcoin. Anita asked, Sometimes people ask me, why is the limit 21 million Bitcoin? Couldn't find any information why Satoshi Nakamoto has chosen this number. Why not 25 or 18 or something else? Do you know? And someone else added, SJ added, why eight decimals? So the number 21 million is really quite arbitrary. It doesn't have any special meaning as far as I know. I think it has to do with the fact that if you um, take a geometric uh, reduction, uh, as is the algorithm that calculates the issuance of Bitcoin, where you have the amount that is issued reduced by half uh, at a set schedule, and you have blocks coming out at a reasonable rate that doesn't create too many orphan blocks, uh, but is fast enough that you can get settlement uh, within an hour, which is um, every 10 minutes. That is a, a reasonable first approximation for a block time. And the initial reward for Bitcoin was 50, 50 coins um, every 10 minutes. Um, nice round number. And the amount reward uh, halves every four years. Again, a nice round number. And if you work that out, um, that geometric pro progression produces 20,999,000 um, uh, point something big. So just short of 21 million. So 21 million isn't really accurate. It's not 21 million. It's 20,999,997. So of all of the numbers I just mentioned, 10 minutes, um, four years, 50 Bitcoin in the initial reward. The one number that isn't a nice round number is the 21 million. It's actually 20,999,000 and change. So it's almost 21 million, which makes me think that it wasn't the 21 million that was chosen. It was the 50 Bitcoin as the initial reward, eight decimal places, uh, which gives you 100 million, which again is a nice round number and it gives you enough decimal places to operate, but also fits very nicely in the in um, integer arithmetic. Um, so uh, eight decimal places works quite well. Uh, it's easy to do the math in most computer libraries. And then uh, finally, um, every ten minutes blocks. If you make blocks faster than ten minutes, uh, you have a problem of having more orphan blocks, um, especially if you have a large decentralized network. And if you make it slower, then you don't get enough confirmations in an hour to to essentially be certain of your transaction. So it seems to me that. The 50, the 10 minute, um, and the four year halving were the numbers that were chosen, and 21 million wasn't really chosen. Captain Hadakal asks, Do you believe that the number of Satoshis in a fully mined 21 million Bitcoin network will be sufficient to support a scaled number of users and layered applications? Meaning, as the price of Bitcoin increases with network effect demand, will the smallest unit be priced out of practical usage? Could you discuss the implications of a decimal place increase? And Captain Hadakal has in parentheses inflation. All right, let's discuss this. First of all, um, I don't think that uh, eight decimal places is enough. I think we're going to see an increase in the number of decimal places. However, that isn't inflation. Um, changing the, divi the, the divisibility of your currency isn't inflation, because it doesn't increase the total amount of currency in circulation. All it does is change the units of the currency you already hold in your hand. They're still just as rare. There's just more smaller divisions of them. That's a very subtle difference, but it's not actually inflation. You're not issuing more units. Um, these don't get added to the circulation um, of the currency. All you're doing is cutting them into finer and finer and finer pieces. In practical terms, it is possible to change the smallest units. Um, the most obvious way is to do a hard fork. 
So a hard fork being a discontinuous, not backwards compatible um, change to the consensus rules, whereby the structure of a transaction is changed, and the structure of a transaction is changed to change the size of um, the value field in a transaction, and change the unit from a satoshi to, let's say, a millionth of a satoshi. So we add uh, nine more decimal places. Sorry, six more decimal places, and um, so we subdivide a satoshi, and we have a millionth of a satoshi. Great. So to add six more decimal places and correct all the software to recognize that these are millionths of a satoshi uh, would take a change that is not backwards compatible. That's a hard fork. If you had enough uh, consensus to do that, uh, that's one way to do it. There are actually some possible ways to do it with a soft fork that have been proposed. And one of the interesting things to notice is that second layer networks, uh, for example, Lightning Network, use sub-Satoshi units. So Lightning Network operates on milli Satoshis, which is thousands of a Satoshi. So what, what happens there is people are exchanging thousands of a Satoshi, but they can only settle and close a channel at a Satoshi level. Uh, so if uh, the balance isn't um, uh, if the balance of a channel is, is less than uh, Satoshi, then they can't settle that. Um, so basically, the Lightning Network and second layer networks like that give you the ability to uh, increase the number of decimals and do smaller and smaller transactions, as long as when you batch them all together and settle, you settle with the smallest unit being uh, Satoshi. So you can actually fix this problem through the second layer, but you can also fix it with a hard fork, or even possibly some strange way of doing a soft fork uh, that changes the transaction structure in a uh, compatible way, um, perhaps by introducing a new transaction version, um, transaction version number. Hard to say. 